Welcome to the presentation surrounding development of a virtual reality prototype for architectural visualization with the integration of dynamic EEG and the creative thinking process. So this was a supervised uh, project for the visual communication design honors degree. Uh, it was in collaboration with two architecture students who both have a diploma of building design and Erin is a second year uh, architecture student at the University of Newcastle. The technology focus for this was the Oculus Quest 2 and the Muse 2 EEG reader, both consumer accessible devices. Uh, at the beginning of 2021, the uh, basis of the project was formed on a research question. So the research question for this project was how can VR experience encourage user engagement in the context of architectural visualization supported by the EEG based creative process. We aim to create four different environments influenced by four corresponding seasons. So the uh, four seasons would influence the architectural style of the um, pieces that we were designing uh, and also change the season of the street that the house would be on. We utilized a practice-based research approach to um, build a solid foundation in virtual reality uh, 3D modeling and game design with the exploration of EEG technology because this is an area that um, hasn't been explored uh, much in the current context. On the right is a, uh, a growth chart, areas that I have now expanded into since this project's conclusion. So I went into this project with a basic Unity and Blender knowledge and professional asset usage. Uh, I now have a deeper understanding of um, Unity and Blender, also the VR setup. I had never um, explored VR before this project. Uh, Cross-program cross communication, so how um, Blender and Unity uh, essentially talk to each other. So um, that was a major thing. Uh, architectural design, I can now read 2D floor plans and um, understand what I'm looking at. Uh, VR development, scene construction, advanced problem solving and EEG capabilities. So these were the steps that we had taken um, from beginning to end. So semester one was on researching, drafting the 2D plans and um, testing this in a initial prototype before uh, going back through it through semester two and creating a more detailed um, and complete experience. So the different pieces of architecture that we chose was the Queenslander style for the summer environment, um, the Tudor style for the autumn, the Queen Anne for spring, and we made a winter cabin for winter. The research techniques implemented was constructionism, which led into Sean's reflective model for the theoretical perspective. So reflection in action and reflection on action, we were constantly looking back at our work and picking on areas that we could improve on or develop further to improve the overall user experience. Our methodology was practice-based research, and this led into our methods, literature review, case studies, reflective journal, and an online focus group, looking at um, other examples of work and um, looking at the techniques they implemented really uh, improved my own, own overall practice in this uh, research journey. So the primary research points were the VR workflow, scene construction, user engagement and user reaction in the game design context, uh, seeing how um, others would improve their own work and uh, seeing what worked and what didn't. Uh, was extremely useful to get an overall image of uh, virtual reality since I had never um, I had never uh, worked with it before. So prior to any user um, user based um, exploration, I made a EEG prediction. So I predicted there would be more brain activity in the VR scenes due to an increase in visual stimuli. Because when you are in a virtual reality um, scene, it is made to be extremely immersive. 
uh, that is that's its purpose to immerse you in the content so I thought that this would have a big impact on brain activity this is um, what I discovered in using EEG in the creative thinking process so I expected to have brainwave data that I could just um, compare to the scene that um, the user was in uh, but the reality of it is it opens discussion verbal feedback and different viewpoints so you are able to get another point of view on your work um, I noticed that sometimes things that I would overlook for example um, one wall was slightly off from uh, connecting to another part of the architectural structure and users picked up on this so I was able to go back and refine it further because uh, when you're working on a project for this long period of time you tend to start overlooking smaller things because there's more focus on the big picture um, public interaction and user engagement observation so you're able to see how the public engages with your project um, and you're also able to uh, map this in real-time EEG results. So dialogue during EEG exploration. So I noted areas of interest to the player. This is the summer environment, the initial house plans that were designed with my collaborators. And this is the 3D result of taking these into Blender and um, recreating um, these these plans. Uh, the 360 um, decks on both levels were um, particularly focus points for the player. They tended to go the whole way around on both levels to get the different perspectives, uh, which shows the importance of exterior environments. This is the entryway to the top deck area. Uh, you can see the outside scene was constructed to block off um, the end of the map to give that sense of endlessness. So all the houses surrounding this are all completely empty. They are, aren't able to wander down the street, but they still like to observe um, the, the scene view. So this is the autumn house in the Tudor style. So the particular interest points for players was the downstairs living room and the upstairs deck area. So interior details and the importance of exterior environments were shown during the, this series of exploration. So this is the living area of the autumn house. So the bay window was a particular focus point and the detailing of the books and decorations um, heightened the realism for the user. So um, they did tend to explore this room a lot more and look at things a lot more closely because of that. This is the upstairs decking area. So again, the um, focus point. Um, they are able to see the streetscape and you can also see the implementation of some of the trees. Um, they did like the outdoor setting and um, the ground texture. The fallen autumn leaves really changed the environment of the streetscape. Uh, again, their view is completely blocked off um, as to uh, give that sense of endless um, in the background. So the winter environments, the areas of interest were the upstairs living room and the um, home office that I made upstairs as well. Uh, this was the winter log cabin uh, design and the environmental elements were also a big thing um, in terms of seasonal change um, coming from the uh, autumn environment which had a very warm tone of oranges and yellows. This is just stark white uh, with interior blue walls to give off that sense of cold. This is um, the upstairs living room. So you can see that it is pretty bare in terms of details. 
but uh, users like the idea of having this uh, second lounge room in the upstairs area and they would also go over to this window and observe the outside environment. Uh, to go with the winter theme it was just a series of dead trees with no uh, wind animations. Um, the fireplace also gives that sense of warmth to the interior uh, which I believed also um, heightened the sense of winter and cold and um, making the home warm and give off that sense of uh, home to the, the player. Going into the home office that had been designed, uh, again this has a lot of uh, book detailing which was very popular among um, the participants. Um, the uh, computer also added to the sense of, um, you know, this is a home office type of deal. Um, they particularly liked the how things were um, slightly rotated to seem like the space had been lived in, uh, and they would go up very close to the shelves and um, observe the type of books that were on the shelf. So detail draws the player in to see um, different areas of the map. So the spring house uh, had the most interactability uh, and also had the abstract architectural element of the round room at the front, you can see on the image here. Uh, it also had a lot of interior details, it has its own library, um, which I will show you in a, in a short while. Uh, this also had particle effects implemented to give off the sense of um, pollen in the air to try and replicate that spring feel. So this is a mirror for um, the purpose of interactability with the uh, scene. Uh, you can see the player changing their hands, a button on the remote does this so they can choose their own look uh, because hands are a big part of their interactive experience. It's how they in interact with the doors with other interactive um, items in the scene. Uh, it's a personal touch that the player can implement um, in the project. The second interactive element was this doll in the corner. Um, the player is able to then pick this up um, and <laughs> the uh, head does come off. Uh, that's just <laughs> that was just to improve the player's experience. Um, they liked having something to do in the scene, so in the future I would um, implement more interactability to this um, instead of just having the player open doors such as what you're seeing. This is the library area, which was again another focus point. So the books um, were the same used as in the autumn environment, but this wasn't picked up by the users. Um, because rearranging them differently, combining them with um, ones you may not have used from the asset pack, um, do change the experience. So the aim for this was to make the space feel lived in. So as you saw, the open book on the lounge was um, made to feel like the, it has been lived in, that someone has been there. Um, this does... Uh, add to architectural visualization, having these small imperfections and avoiding making it feel as though it's a stock space. This is the abstract architectural element, so the round room at the front is simply a sitting room, but adding th things such as the light, that little bit of illumination, uh, makes the space very welcoming. Um, also the, um, the Sun rays also invite the player forward into the um, area. Um, that was a particular favorite point um, out of all the environments, having that little bit of um, difference in the architectural scene. This is the outdoor decking area. So the plant life and the outdoor setting um, was a another um, interest point for the player and again you see the impact of the outside scene um, on the interior environment having that um, that space to look out from. So the results of the EEG data. 
So my initial prediction of a heightened brain activity was proven incorrect, and instead I got very calm brain waves. Uh, the Muse 2 um, measures meditative level um, calmness with birds, so you can see the participants' individual reactions to the summer environment. Participant 2 found it the most relaxing, um, while participant 3 found it the least um, relaxing. So the total exploration time was 46 minutes 32 seconds and the meditative level EEG was 32 minutes and 42 seconds. So it had the highest calm rate with 71%. The autumn environment had a slightly less amount of um, calm uh, with the total exploration time of 42 minutes 13 seconds and the meditative level at 28 minutes 45 seconds. Winter had much the similar um, results. So it had 42 minutes 41 exploration time and the meditative level was 28 minutes 45. So exactly the same as the last one. Spring had the highest exploration time, but the lowest level of calm, but um, I theorize this is due to the interactive elements, um, keeping them occupied, their brain waves occupied. So the total exploration time, 51 minutes, 21 seconds, and the meditative level, um, 33 minutes and 10 seconds. Um, Going back, I would add a lot more interaction to the other environments, but due to deadlines, um, the priority was getting the scenes to an explorable level, so this would be developed further in future. So, in conclusion, using EEG in the creative thinking process displays the project's user's response both verbally and unconsciously, so you open that dialogue between you and the user and um, you, while also getting their subconscious feedback, so their reaction to the scene um, as well as their exploration time, things that um, are able to be used in research. Um, this also encourages the public to interact with the project, while the project creator is able to analyse actions such as exploration and interactive elements to test their development on a smaller scale. Coming back to this graph, uh, you do get a lot out of um, including EEG in the creative thinking process. So you get more than brainwave data and it is extremely valuable to um, implement in any project. Um, and also it explores an area that doesn't have a whole lot of exploring in the current context. So EEG is a fairly new technology, especially on a consumer level. Um, and it is definitely worth um, seeing how you can add to this uh, research bank um, so you are able to see what others have done and build on that for um, future researchers as well. I hope you've had something, I hope you got something out of this presentation and I hope to see more EEG incorporated on others projects. Thank you.